Good evening, afternoon, night, morning, whenever you find a way to watch or listen to this podcast. It's me, Omar, with an old friend of the podcast. We got Sam of the Blue and Gold Report. Um, I mean, it, it, it's just I'm just glad to have him on. I mean, we got we always have nice discussions here. And it's a Navy bye week when we record this, but this will be going out early next week. Um, Sam, before we go on and talk about, I guess, the agenda, how, how's everything going? Well, you know, after the Air Force game, um, you know, people are pretty upset with the with the outcome, with with the offense. You know, it, it, if we bounce back against Temple, you're four and four, you're 500. I, I think the fans will feel a little bit better. I think it's going to be interesting to see who starts at quarterback. And I think I know who the fans want. And I think the eyes show who should be the starting quarterback, but it's up to the coaches. So we'll see. Yeah, we will see indeed. I mean, I think Navy will bounce back. They got a they got a stretch of three very winnable games. I mean, with Temple, which, you know, it's a good segue to our our topic today. They got Temple, they got East Carolina, and they got UN UAB. Sorry, wrong order. Temple UAB on on ESPN network, mind you, and then East Carolina. So, good slate of games. Navy could reach bowl eligibility or we could have they could go two out of three and we could have the climactic scenario of them reaching or I guess playing for bowl eligibility come December 9th which would be neat uh but yeah speaking of Temple uh that is the the first topic of our discussion uh so I mean Temple and Navy are designated yearly rivals there the American does one protected opponent per year compared to other conferences that do two or three and Temple and Navy are each other's protected rivalry and I was all for it I was like man like this brings the conference back to its big east roots you know with this, its footprint with Navy and Temple this is a series that dates back to 1988, and there were, and I'm counting right now, I believe, three meetings, three or four meetings. I, I don't know if, they, if Temple's in the Big East in 1991, but there were three meetings when Temple was in the Big East. So, Sam, as, your perspective as a Navy fan, how do you, do you guys view Temple as a rival or just like someone who kind of cohabitates the Mid-Atlantic with you guys? I mean, it, it's really hard to compare you know, another team to say Air Force or Army. I mean, those are two huge rivalries, and it, it, it's hard to say, oh, someone else is a rival. But you just look at the history throughout the time that Navy's been in the AAC, and I mean, you've had some pretty good games. If if you really think about it, Temple is probably third or fourth on the list of rivals uh, that we play. And you go to 2016, Navy and Temple met in the AAC championship game and, you know, Navy's flying high and then, then you get injuries to, to two really important players. I mean, losing Will Worth was probably the killer. You also lost Tony O'Goley during that time. But I think, I think fans of both sides would say it's, it's a nice little rivalry. I'm not going to say that Navy fans are, you know, all in, oh, we want to beat them bad sort of scenario like army and air force but i i think i think it's a game that both fan bases really do enjoy i would agree and i i, I do think that this game takes i guess more of an important i guess an importance for navy fans over the next five years up until 2026 with the army navy game not returning until i think 2027 um to philadelphia so you know in uh in years like let's see looking at it right now 2014 27 actually no 2017 uh 2021 i mean when the army navy game was in philadelphia anyway you know there kind of wasn't an incentive for navy fans to show out well now with the army navy game not in philadelphia until 2027 i would expect that navy fans would show out for this for a yearly trip to philadelphia to uh, Lincoln Financial Stadium. I mean, one, one more question, I guess, uh, one more question regarding this. I mean, do you think that Temple's going to paint the end zones for you guys, you know, for the Navy midshipmen? They didn't paint the end zones for the Miami Hurricanes. So I, I want to know your thoughts on that. You know, it'd be nice. I mean, it'd be, it, it, it's cool when they do paint the end zones for both teams. You know, I don't I don't think it matters. I, I don't really care. Usually, you know, when you go to a home stadium, you're going to have both end zones with, you know, the home team. So I don't think it's really that big of a deal, but it is it is a nice classy thing when they when they do do that. So, I mean, 
me I, I feel like i want to i want to start a website now called like like temple end zone tracker just to see like you know some weeks do they have eagles you know our temple temple field design tracker like do they have eagles design still do they have do they put the diamonds in like you know do they have center a midfield logo um because it, i don't know i don't know maybe maybe i'm just maybe i'm just too i i hate i hate to, to use the keyword but maybe i'm just too attentive to those type of things i'm not gonna use the keyword actually maybe too attentive to those type of things but i say that boat service academies are worthy of paint in the end zones of lincoln financial lincoln financial field when they play temple oh i agree 100 percent. i i think i mean that the kids do so much they're gonna serve for our country i think it's the least you could do i so i guess one more i guess another question about temple and the rivalry in general so one word i heard thrown around after honestly probably probably the ugliest friday night blow that i can remember in recent memory um happening with uh, temple getting shut out at home um by smu 55 to nothing and someone threw around the term of apathy around the temple program do you think that's something that impacts the way that Navy fans feel about this series where they may perceive Temple fans as being apathetic towards the football program? So it kind of hurts the rivalry. And I I don't want to insult Temple fans. If if you love Temple football, then, you know, like credit to you. But that is just a term that I've heard thrown around. I I don't think it matters. Just just being around the fans going to that Charlotte game. I mean, we we really just we're really supportive of the team. We we know what the players are doing, how much they they put in, not into just football, but you know, in, into everything that they're preparing for after the uh, they graduate from the academy. But uh, all, we just want to see good football, and we want to see our team win. But you know, as long as the fans are nice, they're you know very welcoming i know in charlotte they were very welcoming i'm I'm sure philadelphia might be a little different just knowing eagles fans flyers fans stuff like that but i i don't think it really changes anything in terms of how we feel about temple or our rivalry yeah that that's that's a fair point because you know I would. I mean, it's just a shame too because Temple gets some good home games. They got Miami this year. They have Oklahoma in twenty twenty five. Like credit to Oklahoma. They're. I mean, they still they still owe West Point a game. They still owe us a game. Yes, yes, they but, do. <laughs> but at least they're working towards. I mean, they at least like they are. They are literally Oklahoma, and they are visiting like group of five schools. Um, you know, so you know they have cool like Temple school home games, but you know, just um, just a rough patch of the program. I'm like, yeah, you, you look at it, Temple may not be having the best year, but well, you look at a game that they had this year where EJ Warner just went off and they still lost. I mean, it, it, it's hard It's hard to believe that Temple is in such a rough spot after they've had a history of having some pretty good coaches. You had Matt Rule, you had Jeff Collins, you had Al Golden at a point, and, and those teams were very good. It, it's It's kind of sad to see that Temple is struggling, but I think they're in a position, they're in Philadelphia, you can recruit around that area. I still think they can rise from the ashes. They might need a new coach, but I think I think Temple will will come back from these dark times right now. Yeah, I think they will too, especially in an American that is not the cream of the crop in the group of five. Um, where I, I mean, it'll it'll be, it's like, I mean, honestly, the group of five is even where any conference except for Conference USA, sadly, um, and maybe the MAC sorry, but um, <laughs> is, uh, is, you know, is able to go to the New Year's Six or in, you know, I guess in uh, 20, 24, sorry, 24, excuse me, the uh, college football playoff. So I'm excited for this, for this game, for this series, this game. Navy's got a three-game win streak in the series that you guys have only met 17 times, but it's 9-8. It's about as even as can be. Uh, even in Temple's, I find it funny that even in Temple's worst years from like the late 80s to the early 2000s, Navy was somehow worse. And so Temple got off to a 4-1 four, four and one advantage in the series before things turned around for the Owls, where it was like, you know, always a freebie that Temple could, could you know, count on before playing Miami and West Virginia and pitch. Yeah, we we don't want to talk about those times. Uh, everything that's Paul Johnson and after has been pretty good. Before, eh. Yeah, I would agree. And I mean, there have been iconic moments in this series. Like, I think it was 2008 with, like, that great comeback, I think. Uh, I was like, were you guys, like, 20 down? And then Rick, mm-hmm. this is, like, the, the legend of Ricky Dobbs beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky Dobbs was, 
was amazing. He, he's actually one of my favorite quarterbacks ever. Uh, when I was younger, I I loved Ricky Dobbs and still I, I hated him. him. Coach I, I hated him as a kid, but <laughs> but I I I respect him a lot. I respect him a lot now for what he did for the advancement of a uh, of, of service caps. And he beat Notre Dame twice, almost beat him three times in the uh with the uh, with the 2008 game with uh with that thrilling com- comeback but uh but yeah so i guess moving on to our next topic um we had talked earlier um a, a few weeks ago or not a few weeks ago i guess days ago about having a fun podcast about like where should the bahamas will play but i'm glad they resolved i mean they resolved it quick because i wasn't gonna <laughs> sleep at night <laughs> like i was not gonna sleep at night until they until they decided where the bahamas will team played and so like i thought that they would have played it at ricardo silva stadium in a uh, fiu which i'm gonna write a couple articles you know as, as a journalist too i mean i don't i don't mind the game being at charlotte but you know there's a there's a brand new baseball stadium in um in the bahamas that could have that could have hosted the game um and there's also puerto rico too but um but yeah like i mean the, the Bahamas Bowl will be in Charlotte this year. And I feel like that opens it's it's normally a conference USA versus Mac game because of course passports are a thing. But I feel like now that opens up the pool of teams that you can play, like we're now the whole group of five is at play for a spot in the Bahamas Bowl. That being said, Navy notably drew a soul a sellout at the Jerry, at the Jerry um against Charlotte. Uh Sam, what would your thoughts be about Navy getting a spot in the Bahamas Bowl in Charlotte, the Queen City Bahamas Bowl? <laughs> I would be the first one to buy tickets. Let me tell you. Uh people say 15,000, it's small, it doesn't get loud. It was awesome. It really was. It's a really nice venue. The the stadium's nice. I can't wait to see the expansion. And the campus is beautiful. I think hosting a bowl game here, it'll be be a different atmosphere than the Bahamas Bowl, but I think it will be better in terms of you're probably going to have more people, you know, going to attend. I know you're not going to have the palm trees and the warm weather and the beaches, but Charlotte's a pretty cool city into itself. So being from North Carolina, I think Raleigh's better than Charlotte, but I'm biased because I'm from there. So, but I think, I think um, Charlotte will do well in promoting the bowl and getting people to actually attend the game. Yeah, I think um I think I think um that those are fighting words with with a Raleigh and Charlotte. I remember hearing someone someone from North Carolina say about like Raleigh Durham Air- International Airport where it's like, yeah, it's like they group those cities together, but those cities don't like each other. So, I would assume it's the same thing with like Raleigh and Charlotte. Um I I don't know if you could, I mean can you verify or Uh yes, I mean it's you know, some people think that Charlotte should be the capital of North Carolina just because there's a few more people. It's more of the banking capital, you know, in the state. But Raleigh, in my opinion, because I'm from here, I think Raleigh's better. But Charlotte is still an amazing city uh, on the East Coast. I absolutely agree. So I guess like thoughts like um for, for Navy um joining it, or I guess playing in the bowl game, looking at opponent wise, I would say they would keep the conference USA tie in if uh, Western Kentucky would be able to play in that game because uh, Western Kentucky played in the New Orleans Bowl last year, so that's kind of out of play for them. And it looks like Liberty. Uh, I feel like Liberty will play the Sun Belt champion in the uh, New Orleans Bowl. If not James Madison, if uh, there aren't enough bowl teams, I would love for a 13 and 0, 12 and 0 matchup. Like that is that 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 is cinema. But yeah. um, what what would your thoughts be? I'm gonna run some opponents by you. Um, uh, Western Kentucky traveling to Charlotte. Um, uh, Bowling Green is relatively close to Charlotte compared to the rest of Conference USA. Uh, your thoughts on playing the Hilltoppers? It's a contrast of styles: Austin Reed and Western Kentucky and Malachi Corley. Um, I, I, I don't know. I haven't checked the stats on your pass defense. Um, is there is it is the strength of the Navy defense pat the pass or the run? Uh, really, it's more of the run. Uh, however, the secondary the past few weeks has done better. Besides that ninety four yard touchdown that Air Force had. Uh, if you forget about that, the, the the past two or three weeks we've been great, but definitely the run defense is more of our expertise. That's what I see. Okay, yeah, then I guess you guys would have your hands full um, with uh, with Malachi Corley and Austin. Even though Western Kentucky is at a surprising four and four right now, I don't think many. I thought I know beginning of the year I saw the conference USA being a crash course uh, between Liberty and Western Kentucky, but now it looks like New Mexico State. Looks like New Mexico State and Western Kentucky will be for all the marbles. 
um at least for the second the second spot in the conference USA title game but I know I know Navy has a history with Western Kentucky they played a, a couple games as does Army um mostly because because Fort Campbell I think is like an hour away from Bowling Green uh, it's a natural opponent, and um, I, I remember I remember uh, Western Kentucky really saucing us up when I was a kid or when I was a teenager. But uh, I, guess, I guess thoughts on just like that series in general. I mean, I think it would be cool if Navy played Western Kentucky for sure. Um, I think the contrast in styles you, you just look Western Kentucky's definitely been more of a passing offense, certainly in the past few years. But in general, I think it's. I think the the whole series has been cool in watching the contrast of styles. And honestly, I want to watch it again. We saw what happened in the Cheez-It Bowl a few years ago when you had Air Force and Washington State. I mean, talk about contrast of styles thrown at 60 times versus maybe five. I, I think it would be cool to, to see that with maybe in Western Kentucky. I was at that game, the Cheez-It Bowl. I, I was at that game. Uh, my friends and I went because, you know, um, you know, we took a road trip to uh, the cheese bowl because i i'm a i'm a ballpark football savant i'm a purist i love i remember the i mean i don't remember of course but i lament on the days when um games were at fenway especially yankee stadium as an army fan if you don't want army to play big games in yankee stadium are you really an army fan you know because <laughs> mr inside mr outside woman for the gipper and all that stuff you know that's that's just how you know that's just that's just it's in our yeah. blood it's like it's yeah. like it's like navy and baltimore memorial stadium you yeah. know even though you guys weren't playing, I mean, you guys were playing Notre Dame there, but I mean, like, you, you know, like it, it's, it's, it's like that kind of like thing it's in your blood, but um, going on to like the next opponent, I can see the next set of opponents being a, a team from the Sunbelt East. So I'll just run through some of these possibilities. The Sunbelt East is just insanely, um, I guess I wouldn't say balanced, but just it like the depth in the Sunbelt East is really something yes. to behold. So one by one, I'll go by each team as a shot of ball eligibility. Appalachian Navy, Appalachian State. What would your thoughts be on playing the Mountaineers at in the Queen City? As someone from North Carolina, it would be awesome to see them play Appalachian State. I've never actually seen Appalachian State in person. However, they've had many great teams from FCS to FBS. And let me tell you, Mountaineer fans travel well yeah i think i think the stadium would be electric for that game yeah i would have to agree yeah they they definitely do travel well i mean um they traveled well for i went to the uh, when i was stationed in georgia i went to the duke's mayo classic the uh, undercard game which i thought was the the main event in my opinion on the thursday night against uh against ecu and yeah they traveled very well to that game um going on to uh the next team um uh, Thoughts on Marshall? I know, I know, Marshall is a is a touchy topic uh, after what they did in twenty twenty one to Navy, but uh, a rematch against the Thundering Herd in Charlotte. What's your thoughts be on that? I think that would be cool as well. I got to see Marshall in person against NC State this year. Uh, personally, in my opinion, they should have ran the ball more, but that's just me. Um, but I think that would be a cool matchup. Marshall fans also travel very well. They're very passionate. I, I think they would also be a good choice. Just just looking at what the fans provide, the atmosphere. I think if having the Navy fans who travel well and either App State or we're mentioning Marshall now, fans traveling well. I don't see how you don't sell out the stadium and have a really nice atmosphere for, you know, the once in a lifetime opportunity to have a Bahamas Bowl in Charlotte. <laughs> Yeah, and not to mention they got one of the better, one of the best running backs in the country. They got Rasheen Ali. He's young, he's handsome, he's fast, he's pretty, and he can't possibly be beat. <laughs> That's true. I, 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 wish they, that I wish they ran him more against NC State. I, I I really wanted to see him run, but you know, it is what it is. I I hope he wouldn't run against Navy. I don't think he would. I think they'd have to try to win through the air and Fancher's. You know, he's 50-50 in my opinion. Yeah, I just I just had to throw that in, but yeah, Rasheen Ali. I mean, they like Marshall's had just a plethora of great running backs, like Rasheen Ali. Um, even Kalen Kalen LeBourne had an amazing game against Notre Dame. He was a UDFA for the Niners. I don't think they kept him though. I think he might be on the practice squad or with another team's practice squad. But yeah, the amount of running back depth that like Marshall has produced is is a, is amazing, honestly. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, the one player I think about from Marshall, who was my favorite, was Rakeem Cato. And people forget how yeah, good he actually yeah. was. Oh, man. 
he's still playing arena ball he's playing in the um i actually almost like i actually almost convinced the family to take a trip to um odessa to see him play for the orlando predators um yeah he was actually in, in fayetteville the last year playing for the the fayetteville exactly. team i almost got to see him, but i wasn't oh. able to yeah, I thought I thought he was in Orlando still, but yeah, I know he's been in the NAL for a while. So, um, yeah, I mean, anytime, anytime someone like is playing professional football for a while, like it's it's just great. I know Josh Jenkins, the uh, former great Army corner who uh, left after his sophomore year. Uh, I know he was on the Orlando Predators, and um, I know Jeff Ajekum is playing in the arena. Is playing is playing in the uh, IFL, which like I still gotta, I I gotta make a trip to see him. Like uh, the weekend didn't work out with uh when he played for Vegas and he traveled to Albuquerque, but it's just yeah, like it's on my bucket list to see an army guy play professional football at some level. Um, going on to our next opponent, we got a little bit sidetracked. Um, uh, what about Coastal Carolina? Um, getting the the Chanticleers in the Queen City, getting getting to play against uh Grayson McCall. I know a. Ty Lavatai, Grayson McCall, a uh, quarterback duel will be peak cinema. But you know, the coastal the Chanticleers have had a bit of an off year. I don't think they'd be attractive to the more higher end ESPN bowls uh, as they have been in past years. So thoughts on possibly playing Coastal Carolina. Would that be a name brand win if Navy would beat that, beat the Chanticleers or not? Uh man. I thought, you know, it, just based on what they've done this year, uh new coach. I I don't know. However, again, great fan base. They would travel well. I I think that is a slight feather in Navy's cap if they win. However, I don't think it's as big or as pretty of a feather uh, as it would have been, say, one or two years ago where Coastal was just, you know, winning almost every game. Yeah, I would agree for sure. Um, It's just just a shame that I mean, I just looked at Grayson McCall only has 48 rushing yards after sacks and like the four sacks. If you factor those in, he has minus 92. Going to do some quick math. He has about 150 rushing yards total. And that is just unlike Grayson McCall. So I, I don't know what the play calling is is doing for, for McCall, but it would be a nice little matchup for sure. But I do agree. It certainly has lost its luster. As someone who went to NC State and goes at NC State games when I'm not watching Navy games, Tim Beck is um, an interesting play caller. I know when he left for Coastal Carolina, we weren't that sad about it. However, you look at what Robert and I is doing at NC State now, you're thinking, mm, maybe we missed Tim Beck. I don't know if he's head coach material. However, he's got the team with a rip winning record. So that's better than what a lot of you know new coaches in that position would say. I would have to agree. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I, I'd give it some time. I'm always, I'm always for giving coaches time, but it's just hard to really replicate what Chadwell did. It's such a unique system, and with Beck, you know, um, it, it's it is kind of something different because Power Five schools aren't impl- aren't inclined to try different things like you know Chadwell did. But uh, going on to the next team in the Sun Belt East that could be a candidate. Uh, let, let's group the Georgia schools together. We have Georgia Southern and Georgia State, who both played last night. And I honestly, I just love this rivalry's nickname. Modern Day Hate is such a great, it's just, it's just such a great nickname. Like it plays on, yeah, we're the group of five, but you know what? We we got our own, we got our own version of this rivalry. Um, I mean, Georgia State got off to a great start this year. They've, I mean, I mean, there's still, there's still time for them, but they really needed that Georgia Southern win. They have they too have one of the best running backs in the country, Marcus Carroll, who already has a thousand yards in eight games. Um, you know, Darius Granger, uh, sorry, Darren Granger is an experienced quarterback. He's great, fun to watch. Um, so I guess your thoughts starting off with the Panthers playing the Panthers in Charlotte. Which and, not wrong Panthers, wrong Panthers. <laughs> uh, yeah, wrong wrong Panthers. I mean, uh, I don't think you want to watch the Carolina Panthers right now. Uh, Georgia State would would be. I mean, it'd be a good opponent. I mean, they, they got some very good players. I mean, you're you're coming from the Atlanta area. There's a lot of talent, so you're definitely gonna be facing some athletes. I I honestly can tell you the truth that it's not as attractive as Georgia Southern. So I'll I'll counter that. I'll, I'll counter that. I'll play devil's advocate for me because I think Georgia State being a young program, um, and I think I think um. Yeah, I think them being a young program with a history against the service academies, I think that helps them a lot. Where like Georgia Southern, I think 
there's just that one meeting with uh with Navy when they were when Georgia Southern was in the FCS. And then I know Georgia Southern played us during the pandemic year in really one of the more wild games that I've ever seen. Ended, I mean, one of the few games I've seen the the game end on the can't run two plays within three seconds rule. Um, you know, classic, classic arbitrary rule. But <laughs> I'm going to say that the Georgia Southern game has less luster because people watch Georgia Southern because they run the ball, right? For me, I call me, call me a fuddy dud, call me a purist, call me an old head, but Georgia Southern just hasn't been as fun to watch for me. Like Davis Brin is doing an amazing job this year, Mm -hmm. but he's like, if, if, if I were to pick a quarter, a perfect Georgia Southern quarterback for me, it would be shy words. A guy like Shy Words or Jarek McKinnon or Ke- or Kevin Ellison, yeah, like guys like that, like you know, like Shy Words, man, like that. That guy was a dog, man. Like not, I mean, yeah, Kyle Van Trees was great last year. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, Davis yeah. Green is doing great this year. They got a great receiving core. I mean, Hood and Burgess are do are just probably one of the best receiving tandems in the country. Caleb Hood and uh and Derwin Burgess Jr. probably one of the great the best receiving duos in the country. But it's just like not Georgia Southern football, which for me is a turnoff in my opinion. Yeah, I, I totally understand. And it stinks that they don't run the, the flex bone triple option anymore. I mean, I honestly, it's the greatest offense ever invented in my opinion, but you know, anyways, it would be fun because you have the linking connection with Paul Johnson, who was influential heavily at both schools. He won two national championships at the FCS level with Georgia Southern He came to Navy, introduced his innovative offense, and Navy picked up a lot of steam. He he helped beat Notre Dame for the first time in 43 years. I think the fans of both programs would love the matchup. I don't think anyone else would. But if you're looking to to have people in the seats, I think you, you you would have a lot of people uh, for for the in-person game, but on TV, I don't know if it would get m- that much traction, honestly. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it, it's that's a good point, too, to link with with, uh, with Paul Johnson. Um, and even then, if Army were, were bowl eligible this year, which probably isn't going to happen, but uh, <laughs> but if uh, they're bowl eligible this year, the link with uh, with Jeff Monk and, and, uh, and both programs, which, like, I know that was something that was cool with the twenty. 20- 2020 game but like for me like i just want i'm I'm pulling up the box for the 2020 georgia southern army game i want a georgia southern game where like you know georgia southern navy game where like say ty lavatai has a, has a stat a stat line like ty your tyler did one for one 25 yes. yards 35 <laughs> carries 121 <laughs> yards and then uh georgia southern's quarter like their quarterbacks didn't run for that much for for that much yards but nine for 13 136 yards passing and that's the stat line. Like you mentioned, the flex one, even the shotgun option was so mm-hmm. fun to watch. With the that, like honestly, I'm surprised. Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of, of event here. I'm surprised Army didn't go after Bob DeBess if they wanted to run a shotgun option because Bob DeBess made it work at Georgia Southern. He made it work at New Mexico. Mm-hmm. I was in high school during New Mexico's two year run uh, when they beat Boise State when they played in two straight New Mexico bowls. Like that was that was an amazing like. That was an amazing for, for New Mexico to beat Boise State in that time. Like you could tell that that was a good option. Lamar Jordan is still a hey, we. Ha- I haven't forgotten about Lamar Jordan, man. What 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 a dog, man. I I still hope some team picks him up as like a kick returner or something. Maybe maybe the USFL because that's not that's most that's most of the pro football I watch. Yeah, but but yeah, like that's that's a game I want. I want Ty Lobatai with thirty carries with like thirty carries and like throwing the ball five times and the same thing for Georgia Southern. So I'm off my Georgia Southern soapbox. The last team in the Sun Belt East, you know, we're gonna skip James Madison because I, I don't think they would pit James Madison oh, undefeated. So James good, Madison. so yeah, good. Six and six and it's a shame they think. can't make a bowl. It they are fun to watch. Their defense yeah. is elite. Oh yeah, I mean there, there there is a shot. I do think there is a very high possibility there not being enough bowl teams. Um, but there would need to be at least two open bowl slots. I guess eighty two of the eighty four I think teams in bowl. Team, there's forty three bowls. Don't quote me, but uh, I know I'm doing a bad job as a Kornacki of Bulls right now. But uh, but going on to the last team, without further ado, Old Dominion. Old Dominion's a team that honestly, like, I feel like they're they're probably one of the most bipolar teams in the country because one week they're they're a two point conversion away from losing to Texas A and M Commerce, a team in I think their second in their first year of of Division One, and the next week they're they're almost beating Wake Forest. 
but this is the talented team. Um, and I said, do they beat? Well, yeah, they beat. Uh, yeah, they beat. Uh, Louisiana as well. I mean, this is a team that has uh, you know an electric run game. Uh, the stats don't show up, but their leading rusher, um, Kadarius Callaway, is averaging over ten yards a carry. And then, of course, you got you got Keyshawn Wicks, of course, as well, averaging five yards a carry. So thoughts on the Monarchs playing you guys. You guys have never met. A little bit of a Tidewater rivalry, too, with uh, Annapolis versus the Norfolk area. So I'm very fascinated with that. Yeah, I, I think I think that would be good. It, it would be better if it maybe wasn't played in Charlotte. I think you'd get more people in the stadium. But, yeah, it is cool that there's, there's that link. They are close, and you are correct. Old Dominion is bipolar, and they've honestly been bipolar for a while. If you remember a few years ago, they did beat, you know, Virginia Tech, and then they, they lost to some pretty bad teams that season uh, as well. So, I think it'd be fascinating. It'd be interesting to see which Old Dominion would show up for the bowl game. If it's the bad one, I'd be glad to take the Navy victory. And if it, if they're, you know, on, it would be a difficult time, I think, uh, for the midshipmen, unless, you know, the midshipmen get the run game going. Yeah, the only thing is, is, um, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna insult uh, Monarchs fans. I'm not sure if they travel well because the one sample size I saw, the Myrtle Beach Bowl in 2021, I think uh, Myrtle Beach is like five and a half hours away, six hours away. And of course, yes, the game was on a Monday afternoon, but I think that bowl only drew like 8,000 people at most. Um, It was less than 10,000 at that stadium. So I, I don't know if Old Dominion fans would travel well for it. Um, And even then that was like Old Dominion's first bowl in five years. And that was a show up that they had also too. attendance was hurt by the fact that Tulsa, you had a team from Oklahoma playing on a Tuesday on a, on a Monday afternoon in South Carolina, like ESPN, ESPN is kind of, I feel like there's, there's like bowl games, like ESPN selects. They just, they just do not care about the in-person attendance. They're like, ah, this is just, this is just TV inventory. Like, like we're just throwing yes. this on TV before Monday night football and we're calling it a day. So uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, you can't, you can't go wrong with any of these teams or whether it be West Kentucky at the conference USA or, or any of the Sunbelt East teams playing in Charlotte. Um, so that's, I guess that's all the teams I have for my list, uh, Sam. Do you have anything else you want to add or? No, I, I really just want to make a bowl game, to be honest. And I, I think we have a chance. I, I really think that Navy fans would love whoever, uh, you know, we, we draw if we make a bowl game. We we honestly, Navy fans do like to have fun um, and they travel well. They have been uh, just meeting people that they just enjoy Navy football. And if you get to see one more Navy football game, I think it's just a win. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see them in, in the Palmas Bowl, but I mean, any bowl in general, too. I've been going to the to the military bowl. They haven't been in six years. I think the military bowl will be stupid to pass up on the midshipmen, which I don't think they will. And mm-hmm. I think, see, I, I did have, let's see, I mean, I have like North Carolina State, ironically enough, in my current projections in that game. I know, yeah, I know, not not because of you, not because of you, Sam. I'm just saying like the way things are holding out, I guess. It could be Virginia. It could change to Virginia Tech, to be honest with you, because Virginia Tech looks like they've turned their season around mm-hmm. because there are there are like there are the, the two greatest teams of all time are September Maryland and September through October Syracuse. Those teams are just borderline unbeatable, which uh, not not to throw any shade on Dino Babers, but it's just like it's just mind boggling that they are unable to like put together a full season like going like two years in a row now. Um, so just- just watching his team from from afar, you know, maybe he's near New York, and then also being able to see them play in C State. Dino Baber- Babers is a good guy. I think. Yeah. I just I don't know if he's the right head coach for any team, but his offensive prowess. If he's just in charge of the offense, I think it would go very far. It's kind of like Josh McDaniels, terrible head coach. But, man, if you got him as offensive coordinator, you're going to have an offense that is going to be very special. I think yeah, I think if you put him back in the MAC, like, um, and I feel like I feel like Sean Lewis would have a similar trajectory. Where it's like, I don't know. I don't know how Sean Lewis would fare as a power five coach, but Sean Lewis at Kent State, when he was at Kent State, like, he set the world on fire. Dino Babers, he pretty much made Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, and then bowl, the bowls, those Bowling Green offenses, like, uh, in, the, in the early well, – mid early 2010s amazing so hopefully uh, hopefully Syracuse makes a bowl I had them going to the Fenway Bowl this year but it's really looking kind of kind of shady at this point but uh 
yeah that being said i i have i have nothing else to add sam this this was great always always a pleasure talking talking with my navy my navy brother here oh i i always love coming on here and it's it's just awesome to think that we have just formed this you know relationship just just based on army navy football and just getting to know each other you know by by talking it's just it's absolutely awesome yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I I truly cherish it. And I mean, I can't wait till this drops on Monday. But until next time, everyone, peace, love and soul and beat you mass. <laughs>